Hi Bonnie, my name's Steve Baker and I'm a planner based at Hatfield at the Hub. I work for Affinity Water and its predecessors for 43 years now. And why are we here and where are we? We're at Rose Dock, which is just a few miles south from the Hub at Hatfield. I've been told that there's some archival material here. Well, we're putting together a series for Affinity Water, looking at the history of Affinity Water in objects. So what objects have you chosen for us today? And are we likely to find them in your archive? Well, we hope so. I've chosen mapping. So we hope to see some old company maps in here. And we're also looking at logos and tankers as well today. But let's focus on maps. We're walking along inside the archive. What's in this door? This is the door and let's see what's inside. And let's see where the light switch. Here it is. There we are. Great. Oh, straight away. Yeah, there, there are maps. We can see what we're looking for. These go back, let me just see, to Lee Valley Water Company. That's the company I started with, as luck would have it. It's some uh, maps of local area, distribution area. There's some water mains and some fittings along the way. So, yes, this is exactly what we were hoping to find. And the history of maps in Affinity Water. Why were maps important? And were they always mapped to the same scales as we have today? Well, when I started, we were transferring from what was known as county series, which were taken back from the turn of the century, in fact, the base maps were, and we were then transferring to the Ordnance Survey maps. So they were actually a different scale. Countryside, rural areas were 1 to 2,500 scale, and the built-up areas, because you needed to see more what was going on, 1 to 1,250. So at that time, we were transferring all our data from the old maps to the new maps. We didn't actually transfer data like for like. My job, bearing in mind I was 16 then and couldn't drive, um, and I had to be taken out by one of the other draftsmen, was to literally plot every single fitting in Hertfordshire at the time. Hydrants, loose valves, onto the new base maps, which meant literally pacing, measuring, and sometimes we found fittings that weren't even shown or were in the wrong place. So everything was resurveyed. And so this was all written down in map form and to scale? That's absolutely correct, yes. So I can honestly say at that time, which was the late 70s, early 80s, I'd been to every single fitting in the whole of the area. That's amazing. And how have maps changed over that period? The biggest change came around in the mid to late 80s when everything was digitised. We had a department set up called Digital Mapping, which is very self-explanatory. So we literally traced off the, the paper maps with a thing called a puck, which was basically a cross, and we clicked along every single main and fitting and replotted everything onto a digital format. So that was, that was the biggest change, I think. And then, apart from in this case, where only very few survive, we literally threw away the old maps. I saw all my drawings going in the skip. And so there would be no record of them today? No, unless any, uh, you know, managed to survive, like in here, they were all chucked in the skip. So, Steve, this map we're looking at today is very precious. It is, really, and I noticed, you know, it's, a, it's been printed onto paper. This would have originally actually been on blue linear cloth, which literally is what it said, it was a cloth. It's waxed, so it wasn't too material-like. And then this is the dye line print. So this has gone through a machine of awful toxic chemicals, which I used to have to do as well, and used to do terrible things to your skin. And if we can just have a look, I can see what date this was, and it survived remarkably long. I'm looking for a date. Um, I can't see one disappointingly but um, you have to have a good eyesight yeah, you'd have to have good eyesight it should have a date I, unbelievable but i would say this is at least unless i'm looking in the wrong it's place 1964 really doesn't, yeah, doesn't, you can see that can you oh yes there it is yeah 64 there's a various amendments as well so there's a signature here saying 9964 yeah, in red yeah, there you are so if this has survived all that long this is remarkable because this kind of dye line print really fades from day one 
survive remarkably well. And you say it used to be done on cloth in your lifetime? Yes, it was the last... I've always kind of arrived at the last knockings of everything. Yes, it was linear cloth. It Literally, if you were to put it into water and soak it, it would have gone back to a cloth. That's remarkable. If we move on to the two other objects we're looking at in the series, we're also focusing on logos and tankers. Logos, Affinity Water, I presume you were the Lee Valley Water Company in Hatfield. Yes. And and then you had to switch, so a new logo. Yeah, we've changed logos several times. When I arrived, it was obviously blue, and it was embossed. That means it's gone under, it's printed, then it's gone under a kind of a heat treatment, which brings out the ink to make it, for want of a better phrase, bumpy. That was seen as the kind of Rolls-Royce of logos to have an embossed logo. During the mid-80s, I wasn't particularly asked to. I don't know quite why I did it, but I doodled a new logo for Lee Valley, which was quite simple, really, literally a circle. It had one quarter cut out with wavy lines, obviously to represent water. The rest of it was in dark blue with white, I think, hollowed out letters, Lee Valley Water Company. And that was actually taken up and used, if anybody wants to see one. If next time you're in the hub, just look in the glass case and there's some other artefacts, one of which is a water-saving stamp card and it's got my logo on it. Then, up to the present day, where does Affinity Water's logo now date from? As far as I can tell, I think it's probably about five or six years old. You wouldn't actually see it that much in essence, probably only on website material because in essence there's not too many letters go out. Although I suppose everybody going on a meter, for example, gets one. If we say that you had a letter from Affinity Water 50 years ago and it's got the embossed logo on, is that a precious thing? Yes, it is. And I think you would... So you really would keep it? I I would actually now as a historical artefact and I'm sure some exist. We've certainly got some exist in existence from Colne Valley Water. I think if you got a letter from Lee Valley Water Company, especially the embossed variety, it would have arrived in a brown envelope, which would have meant something serious, a bill or something, and it would have carried some weight seeing those words and letters. So that letter might be worth more than your bill now. Could well be, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice one. So in terms of our third object today, tankers, why were they used by Affinity Water or its predecessor? In days gone by, it was unfortunately necessary when carrying out repairs, as it is today, but not so much, to actually have people's supplies cut off while we carried out the repair. Of course, now that's not so critical because we can rezone water and uh, we can lay overlanders, overland mains to maintain supplies. About 30 years ago and less, we used to use a thing called a bowser, which was uh, a trailer, a tanker, a small tanker, which would carry water, be parked in, for example, a cul-de-sac or somewhere like that, where people could go and fill up a bucket or a kettle or whatever. So technically, they still had access to a water supply. Um, that sort of thing has long since stopped. There may be a few redundant rusting bowsers in some yards. There certainly was at Essendon. That brings us neatly then to the end of our first series looking at the history of Affinity Water in 12 objects. We've covered maps, logos and tankers. Should we just go back to this map of 1964 that's in front of us? Anything else that strikes you? Because company archives are important. Yeah, I think obviously the biggest thing that strikes me is because of that time all measurements are in imperial which some people can relate to better and others can't everything's hand drawn with a great skill let's say goodbye for today and look forward to talking to you again steve about the next three objects in our series looking at the history of affinity water in 12 objects thank you thank you very much bonnie look forward to it next time (laughs) 